Okay, uh, uh, welcome, uh, very warm welcome to everyone. And uh, many thanks for taking time to attend this webinar. Uh, my name is Satish Shahir, I head the India region. So before you start, I'd just to you know, let you know about TechWave. TechWave is established a global end-to-end -end service provider with wide range of service offering. And we are already engaged with our customer in revolution digital transformation journey. We have been present in the industry for more than 16 years and our offices are spread out in all five continents. We have more than 500 plus, you know, very satisfied customers globally. Today, you know, we have uh, Srikant Subramanyam who heads the enterprise business services globally. We have Saurav Anand, who is the solution architect. And we also have Reena Sharma, who heads the, you know, India and Middle East sales. Over to you, Srikant, uh, and wishing everybody good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Satish. Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, a warm welcome again uh, to this webinar. Uh, we all know um, one of the biggest themes that are going on is around GST uh, in India. And uh, with the mandate um, of the government of India to implement um, e invoicing solution. Uh, for companies having turnover greater than 500 crores. Um, so we at TechWave um, <clears throat> have uh, looked at the entire gamut of the requirements from a, a GST perspective and have built a solution uh, which is primarily addressing the needs of um, the compliance purposes as well as um, being able to <clears throat> generate the e-invoice as well as the uh, EVA bill uh, using the links that the GSTN portal allows. Today, uh, we will uh, walk you through a bit of the presentation on um, what the solution is all about, and then straight away jump into uh, the demo of the solution, a quick walkthrough of the solution. And uh, at the end of the uh, session, if, uh, if there are any questions, feel free to <clears throat> you know, ask us, and uh, we will be glad to respond back to you on this. Um, the GST Council of um, uh, had <coughs> introduced the e-invoicing or the electronic invoicing um, to be implemented by uh, all companies, uh, uh, you know, with a certain turnover and above starting from April 1st. Uh, however, uh, due to the uh, ongoing pandemic, uh, the government decided to postpone that and now have mandated that uh, from 1st October onwards, uh, for in all the companies which have turnover of 500 crores and above, need to comply with the e-invoicing requirements. These are primarily for uh, all the B2B transactions, uh, and uh, one needs to generate the IRN through the e-invoicing portal that the government has launched. Um, customers can integrate their uh, existing ERP systems uh, with the uh, with the IRN portal, um, either directly through the APIs that the IRN portal has uh, uh, launched, or they could go through a GSP to link their, uh, their ERP system. So um, I, I don't want to dwell into, uh, into why invoicing. I think we all know that uh, largely it is uh, to allow for an integrated compliance process, primarily, you know, um, uh, you know, kind of mitigate some of the uh, evasion that was happening, improve the compliance process, and ensure the entire uh, consistency, right from um, the supplier raising the invoice to the customer being able to take that tax credit. So the entire end-to-end -end supply chain process of, uh, you know, uh, taking the the tax credit. Uh, by the end user is to be made seamless. And that's the reason of these, uh, this invoice. And it also avoids some of the uh, issues that are today prevalent in terms of the invoice mismatches and the gaps in the credit that, uh, in that the customers are not able to uh, take benefit of. So in a way it is, um, it's, uh, it's to improve one is a, the entire process flow uh, improve the uh, reconciliation aspect of uh, the GST uh, process, 
uh, improve mostly the work cash flow and the working capital because it's not stuck. You're able to get the uh, GST reconciled and free up your cash flow. And um, you know, <clears throat> something that you know is is available across the entire uh, chain of transactions, and somebody can refer to uh, it. It will also reduce the compliance requirements in terms of the audit and the and the surveys that the tax authorities would have to do. Um, and to ensure that the compliances are met. So what does uh, the impacts are? You know, so it al allows for uh, you know, real-time reporting. Uh, the same data is, uh, is seen by everybody um, and it is uh, integrated uh, in IT system, with the IT systems. Uh, the changes, if any, in the transactions are recorded and available. Um, any any changes uh, done, um, you know, uh, there is a requirement that um, you can do a cancellation of the invoice within 24 hours and beyond the 24 hours, you'll have to either process it by either debit note or credit note. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, there is a need for the validation of the invoices before generation. And uh, it also ensures, um, you know, the robust controls and processes are in place. <clears throat> we all know there are uh, a lot of uh, the reporting requirements, especially, uh, you know, the annexure A1 and the annexure 2, uh, the cash ledgers and the um, uh, RET and PMT uh, reports that need to be uh, submitted. So all this is possible using uh, once the e-invoicing um, solution is implemented. So uh, the entire process, uh, I think, uh, Saurabh, would you like to take take it over from here in terms of how the invoice uh, invoicing e-invoicing process works through the uh, our solution? Yeah, thanks, Rikan, sir. And so, uh, from a process perspective, there are multiple changes which you uh, know uh, which has to be implemented. Okay, now it is all starts with uh, the generation of the invoice in your accounting system, and in this case, the SAP system. In SAP, the moment you will generate an invoice, uh, no, those invoices will be considered uh, legally valid. Uh, document only if the IRP portal has validated them. Okay, so you need to connect your SAP environment to uh, the IRN environment to get that data. Okay, now the documents which will be covered under the IRP uh, ambit will be basically your all B2B invoices, uh, which includes your export documents also and stock transfers also. Uh, any if you are into B2C transactions, then B2C transactional invoices are exempted from the IRP right now. Okay. Uh, same is true for your credit note or debit note, irrespective of, uh, I know what is your nature of business, whether you are in uh, real estate, you are in utilities, you are in uh, uh, normal sales module of SAP, everything will need that. Uh, all those invoices will need the you know, IRP validation to be done. Okay. Now the, the IRP will authenticate uh, the document based on the data we submit to the IRP portal. Now the submission of the data government wants to be done in an encrypted format of a JSON. So government has already released the format in which the data needs to go. And <clears throat> any data which in goes and gets validated will also, uh, if applicable, the eBay bill can be generated from the solution directly. Okay. And any changes, as, uh, as uh, no, it was explained, uh, told earlier, any changes in these invoices, once they have been validated by the IRP, uh, needs to be done within 24 hours, okay? If any changes are done after 24 hours in the invoice, that means if you cancel an invoice after 24 hours uh, time period of IRN generation, then your uh, validation, okay, that is your uh, GST, uh, liability of those invoices will not be auto reversed by the government. Okay. Uh, so the government is promoting that if you have to do a cancellation, please follow a credit note or a debit note um, uh, cycle. Okay. Uh, the data which we send it to the IRN portal for validation that will be auto populated into the GSTR one of the customer GSTR two of the buyer. 
and the eBay bill system, sir, for the eBay bill generation. Um, Shrikan, sir, if you move to the next one. Um, so from a solution perspective, our solution, uh, basically, it's already connected to the, um, it's a bolt-on solution built on top of SAP. It is uh, agnostic of any GSP. If you are already utilizing any GSP for connectivity or to for filing your GSTR, or those GSP uh, solutions can be leveraged so that your user does not have to navigate to multiple system in order to get the data, okay? And SAP being your, becomes your single source of truth. And since SAP is the solution from where you will be printing your invoices, uh, the controls around the IR and printout and everything can be done on the SAP system directly, sir. Okay. Uh, I think we can go to the next one, sir. We have already covered this. Uh, this is a very high level uh, you know, process flow, which has been explained here. So in your SAP, you will generate the document. That document uh, will be your, can be your invoice, can be a credit note or a debit note. That document will be validated by the TechWeb uh, bolt-on of uh, tax, uh, India Tax Solution. Once the document has been validated, it, uh, the GST Subhuja provider or the GSP, that's a uh, additional component, which is a non-mandatory component. Government has given the APAs even directly. So if you want to connect to the government portal directly, you can connect to the government portal directly, or if you have existing GSP, uh, the system can connect to the GSP and send the data to the IRP portal. Uh, the IRP portal's responsibility is to validate the sanity of the data, uh, generation of the QR code and the uh, uh, IRP number or the IRP code. Once it has done, it will send that data <clears throat> along with the digitally uh, signed copy of the invoice uh, back to the GSP, either to the GSP or it can send the data directly to our uh, add-on solution directly. Okay. Uh, and the same gets saved in your SAP and utilized further in the downstream process of your invoice printout, uh, validation of uh, invoice cancellation or any, any follow-on changes that you would want to do or any follow-on process which you will be doing in your SAP from your sales cycle perspective. Uh, now the data which has been submitted to IRP that will be saved on the IRP portal for 24 hours. And after 24 hours, it will be pushed to your GST in portal for an extra one and an extra two update. Uh, to the eWay bill portal, it gets updated immediately uh, to generate your part A of eWay bill, uh, which is basically the invoice data. Part B of the eWay bill, if you uh, provide the transporter details along with the Invoice, your part B and the eWay bill will be generated automatically, or you can update these details of part B uh, even after generation of the IRN. Uh, the government will also, after populating all these details, will send a digital signed copy of the document to the buyer. Uh, <clears throat> now this is, if we are sending the email address of the buyer and other things as a part of the JSON, it will be sent and uh, it will be updated. The buyer will be updated at the real time that there has been a the invoice which has been posted and there is a GST liability which has been created in the system, okay? Now this is a more detailed flow. So of the solution where uh, the bolt-on which we have built, it has got four components, okay? Uh, one is data validation. Now data validation is uh, when you are generating a uh, invoice, the bolt-on solution does a validation that all the master data, whatever is required by the IRN, it's available in that. If there is any other uh, transactional data which is required by the government, if it is to be made, made mandatory and other thing, all that kind of data validations are done by our uh, bolt-on solution. Rule-based segregation of data, the, that is a rule engine which basically segregates the data uh, from a B2B to B2C or from export uh, invoice so that uh, the system is aware that what kind of a data has to be sent to the government portal, which data does not need to go to the government portal. It uh, prepares the JSON and sends it to the portal and receives the data back. Uh, the bolt-on uses your AS2 protocol-based data transfer, which is already encrypted. And uh, the bolt-on sends the data only up to the IRP and the post IRP, it is uh, you now the IRP portal's responsibility and they take care of the uh, solutions. Uh, these are the few key features of our solution. So first is configurability where uh, the solution is uh, built for uh, you know, uh, 
uh, in a configurable way so it can uh, work with either of the gsps if you have any or if you want a direct connection it can be done using a direct connection and it is compatible from ecc6 ehp0 tool as for ana 809 that's a kind of a rigorous testing and the solution standards which we have followed uh, solution has three different modules as we were saying that uh, we have looked into the solution from the complete uh, gst uh, no uh, gst uh, point of view so it can be deployed either only as a e invoice if you have a need only for the e invoice e invoice plus the returns that is your gstr1 gstr2 gstr3 3b compliances or any other which is applicable that will be there uh, and along with that then eva bell so these are three components of the solution which are also coupled with each other but can be even deployed independently okay the next or the um, uh, no one of the key benefits of the solution is it is uh, it has got a 0% dependency on the technical team in order to uh, comply with any of the statutory requirement which comes up in the uh, future okay it is highly highly configurable so any person who is using the sap uh, can go ahead and uh, configure the entire solution going forward uh, the configuration can be even including the rollout to a new company code or a new business place or a new document type which you might create or a new module which you might add in sap uh, there is a dep zero dependency on the technical support for them okay the solution has two write back option one is online another one is a uh, batch mode or a offline mode <clears throat> the configurability uh, as i said it is having uh, uh, no it can, it is it is having zero dependency on the technical support so you can get it done by on your own uh, the source data can be from multiple sources okay uh, it can be from sap or if you have a crm system from where you do it it uh, the same solution can connect to the crm system it can pick only invoice specific data it can, it can pick invoice specific data by gstn and other things okay um, the other uh, key important aspect will be around the commercial so we have a bundled support price and we the solution also as we Manu said earlier also supports the return filing of the GST sir. Okay. Uh, these are the few advantages of the invoicing the invoice solution uh, as I you know I think we already covered this in the key features. Uh, now this is a key comparison uh, no, a quick comparison sheet which we have created when you compare TechWeb solution along with SAP has a e-document solution and then their third party uh, GSP solution. So if you see, um, no, no, in most of the column, uh, TechWeb solution meets uh, uh, no most of the requirement or most of the support needed uh, from uh, uh, no integration point of view on the SAP, whereas uh, the other solutions have it uh, only up to an extent, right? Like our solution has been uh, built as a bolt-on, so it is completely on SAP, whereas other solutions does it outside SAP for JSON creation. The interface is 100% within SAP, so your user does not have to go anywhere. Uh, we are going to quickly support it and uh, you know the even the user training and other things uh, uh, No, that does not needs a lot of time, right? You you are going to save it the implementation time is another thing which is going to be very quick around uh, our solution uh, We can get you live within three to four weeks time with all the changes whichever is required so uh, Now there are <clears throat> Few perspective which needs to be uh, uh, no, looked into before you. Sort of in the interest of time, can we switch on to the? Uh, yeah, demo? we can do that. Yeah. So what I'll do is, you know, instead of doing this, I'll show you quickly the solution, uh, so that you can uh, uh, look into how the solution actually behaves, and we can move into uh, no Q and A. So uh, if you can stop sharing, I'll start sharing mine. Just. Let me know the moment my system is visible. I hope everyone is able to see my screen. Um, I'll take up a sales cycle and I'll show you how the system 
uh, connects in tandem directly to the government portal, get your data and how the cockpit and the reporting looks into the system. So I'm going to start with uh, a delivery note. And uh, the reason I'm going to start with delivery note is so that I can fill in the data, whatever is required from the perspective of eBay bill. I'm just filling up, uh, I filled up the standard details. Now I'll be filling up the details, whatever I need is specific to eBay bill. The route is something which we use it for distance calculation. Uh, the shipment type, again, the route can be either configured within your SAP system, or you can have the same uh, pulled up by uh, my, you know, Google APIs to do a distance calculation from pin to pin. After the delivery has been saved, uh, uh, whether you use a manual creation of an invoice using VF01 or you use uh, the background mode of creation of the invoice, uh, the system will take care of generation of the IRN on the action of the save of your invoice. Now, <clears throat> while saving the invoice, uh, as uh, the government needs only B2B invoices, the segregation rules are written. Uh, I know how to identify the B2B invoices though those segregation rules are either based on uh, you know, the GS number is available in the customer master or you have different customer grouping or you have different document type either of them can be configured and the same can be picked directly so uh, again from a user standpoint there is no change on the user screen the way he is doing the things as of today he'll be doing it the moment you will save the document, uh, the, the system will right now connect to the government portal and generate the IRN. Uh, however, if you want it to run in a batch mode or you want the entire process to be manual, uh, uh, that also uh, are the parameters which can be configured in the system and the system will pick it from there. So, okay. So I'm just going to save it right now. Now um, we have our own uh, cockpit. Now the cockpit is basically a single place, uh, you know, uh, which will help the customers uh, in order to control, in order to uh, view all the details regarding to pertaining to the e invoice and the eway bill. Okay, uh, so here you will see that uh, there are basic details of the documents which are visible, all uh, which includes your document, customer, customer details, the total value of invoice, GST, and other details. And on the right hand side, you have the uh, details pertaining to the government portal which is coming and the status around them, uh, you know, uh, those respective fields. Again, uh, we also have the data which, we, which is required from a finance standpoint, that is the fiscal year period and all that. From an audit trail perspective, the same report helps you in gen, uh, no, getting the audit from where the system has validated the data or uh, generated the document, who has done it, done it. So you can have a complete audit trail of the system. Uh, from the same uh, cockpit, you can navigate to the details of the document just at a click of the uh, no, um, and the selection of the document number or if you want to navigate to see the customer details you'll be able to see it uh, if there is any error the system will highlight the error here itself so that the user can correct that and the iron can be generated so the uh, process which i showed you that is the auto iron generation but in case if you want the uh, iron to be generated manually that also can be done you have to just select the document and click on the create iron button and it will generate the IRN automatically from here. Or you can use the generate eBay bill to generate the eBay bill if it is not generated. Now, <clears throat> once the eBay, you know, if you have a you know, system where your transported details and other thing comes at a later stage after invoicing or it is getting done by a different team altogether, in that case, what you can do is you can get the same uh, updated at a later stage after your IRN has been generated using update eBay bill validity. 
and update vehicle details so that your part B of the document gets updated and you are able to print the EA bill directly from the system. Okay. So uh, this becomes a comprehensive point of uh, truth to the uh, team. And uh, similarly, uh, there is a detailed report. Detailed report is more at a line item level where the user will be able to see each document details by line item and even the breakup of the different taxes by tax code and everything, right? So here you get a breakup. Here you do not get any of the action item because all the actions are based on the header of the document and not at the line item. So now in case of a uh, uh, no, uh, in uh, in case of a business continuity where let's assume if your iron connectivity is down or anything is down there's an option where you can download the data directly from the portal here directly from the sap here in the format uh, the government needs it and then you can upload it to the government portal and get the iron generated manually if required in case there is a connectivity issue or the api issues or if the customer does not want their sap system to be connected to the apis directly now oh, apart from this we have our own reconciliation reports which can again be uh, connected back to the uh, uh, government system to pull up your gstr1 and gstr2 details now these details can be pulled up from the system and can be consolidated with the data which we get it from the government portal um, based on the data which we get it from the uh, government portal, we can uh, uh, show you, uh, you know, you can uh, do a mismatch uh, uh, validation, a two-way validation of the data. And based on that data, if there is any amendment to be filed against GSTR1, uh, uh, that will be done. Okay. Uh, GSTR2, also we have a report. Now, GSTR2, it's more of a reconciliation. So, you can only view the tax input credit which is available to you and you can then uh, only request your suppliers to file their GST on time. Okay. Uh, the third one will be GSTR 3B. Now in GSTR 3B, we do a validation before you post an invoice because as per the government rule, if the 3B has not been filed for the last quarter, you are not allowed to generate a e-web bill or e-invoice uh, or a invoice uh, on your system. So we validate that at that time you are uh, doing your IRN generation just to ensure that uh, 3B is already populated correctly so that uh, you know, there is no mismatch in input tax credit and anything going forward. Sir. So this is uh, one of the GSTR1 report for the B2B transaction. Uh, this follows uh, the same format as that is being provided by the government portal. So even if you don't want the system to be connected, uh, then you can do a manual reconciliation by using a download program. And uh, by downloading this data and uh, uh, or if you want to upload your GSTR1 directly from uh, downloading here to the government portal, uh, you are uh, eligible to do that. Now GSTR1 have seven different formats. So we are providing the output in all those seven different formats. Whereas GSTR2 basically comes only in two different formats and we are supporting you on the both. Both uh, one is for the registered and unregistered. That is your B2B, B2C or any kind of sales. And second one is for the import. So the same is also available here. So, so this is more of your purchase register, which you can validate. Here there is no uh, data update back to the uh, GST portal. Here you can only see the mismatches and then you can request the particular supplier uh, to update uh, the GSTR uh, filing on time. Sir. Okay, this is to enable your tax input credits are uh, done on time. Uh, the data points for all these reconciliations uses uh, your uh, multiple data points like for GSTR2, uh, we use the vendor name along with the invoice date or uh, along with the invoice date and the value of the transaction to be do, uh, to do a match. Okay. HSN code is not available as a part of the GSTR2 output from the government portal. So HSN code cannot be matched. Whereas in GSTR1, even the HSN code uh, level match is being done. So, okay. uh, so uh, that will be a quick um, uh, view of the solution uh, uh, which we have built uh, and uh, around the Printout. Now, printout is something which is going to be uh, very, very specific to each customer. So, printout is something which, uh, uh, although government gives us a standard printout, uh, uh, no digitally signed copy, but uh, the way each customer has configured their invoices layout, 
um, this is something which has to be done manually or has to be developed or and configured manually in each of the customer environment to put the IRN number and the QR code in a particular place on the invoice uh, output. Depending on the space availability, you, normally we are suggesting that you put the IRN and the QR code towards the uh, top right corner. But if the top right corner is already occupied by, let's assume, ship to party, sold to party or any other detail, um, then depending on the space availability on your forms, uh, the same can be uh, updated anywhere. Sir. Okay, so that will be uh, around the solution uh, solution brief or the solution demo. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop here and then let uh, uh, no, uh, uh, open the. I think uh, what our attempt was there uh, <clears throat> today is to educate um, the audience in terms of the the compliance requirement that is becoming mandatory from 1st uh, October onwards and uh, gauge with whether you as an organization are, are compliant to that. If not, then, um, you know, TechWave has a solution in terms of a bolt-on that can, that can be um, put on top of uh, the ACP platform, um, be it ECC or uh, be it S4 HANA. It works with both the environments and it is a, a fully compliant to uh, the requirements uh, that the GST authorities have laid out as, as per the latest uh, you know, circulars that have been coming up. And we have been, uh, our constant endeavor has been uh, to uh, keep updating our uh, solution based on uh, whatever circulars that the government of India keeps releasing on a time to time basis on this uh, on this uh, particular uh, requirement. Um, so our solution is, uh, we feel is, is uh, fully compliant to uh, meet many of your um, reporting requirements as well as the invoicing requirements. And as uh, sort of uh, walked you all through, um, you know, the solution is fairly um, user friendly. It doesn't require uh, much of training and uh, at the same time gives you all the information that is required. Um, and, at the, uh, and on top of it, it's not just purely an invoicing solution. It is also enables you to report on the GSTR one, GSTR two, and an extra one, an extra one, an extra two, and many of the other uh, compliance requirements in terms of the reporting the needs that are there. Uh, and and our solution can be uh, you know fully integrated into your uh, current platform within a, a short period of time, be it uh, about. Uh, you know, two to three weeks of time is what we need for it to be integrated with your SAP solution. Uh, the the only um, uh, time that it would require is on the changes to the forms. In case you have uh, um, you know <clears throat> forms, the multiple forms that are being used, then that is the effort. That is the additional time that it will take. But otherwise, from a solution point of view, it is fairly you know plug in. It can be plugged in into your SAP system fairly quickly. So with that, um, you know, um, I would uh, like to thank all of you all for having attended this particular uh, uh, webinar. Um, thanks for your participation. And uh, feel free to reach out to us in case you need any questions, any of our, um, our, our, <clears throat> um, our team members would uh, be um, very happy to kind of respond to you. Um, and if you need any, um, you know, additional demos or anything uh, additionally that you need to ask us in terms of questions or in terms of clarifications, as I said, um, Saurabh or I or any of the other teams are uh, available to be reached out or, um, and, and um, drop in an uh, email and then we will be happy to, uh, you know, come and meet up with you. Thank you again, once again, uh, for having, uh, you know, spared <coughs> your uh, busy schedule um, to uh, attend this particular seminar, seminar or webinar, which is, which is fairly important because, uh, you know, this compliance is going to become mandatory, as I said, from 1st of October. And we want to ensure that all the organizations have a solution like ours uh, to be in a, in a position to be, uh, you know, be in a position to uh, generate e invoices from your systems. Thank you again and have a nice day.